decreeing and declaring. You must start walking in that more often. Decreeing and declaring, it'll do something to your mind and it'll also do, oh my gosh, Cindy, I forgot your thing. It'll do something for your mind. It'll do something for your heart. And it'll bring you into a lot of mindsets that God wants you to have. You have to spend more time with the word. If you're going to be anointed, you have to decree the word over yourself. I decree things over Zendaya Glory Homes very early. Because I'm sowing the seed into her garden. It'll grow over time. That's why the Bible said train up a child in the way that it should go. Because what happens is that seed will grow over time. The whole seed principle is so powerful because if you decree something in your atmosphere, you're sowing that seed. There's a harvest for it. There's a harvest for a seed that you sow into your atmosphere. When you sow the words of God, you'll reap the words of God. Sometimes you have to speak yourself into what God wants you to do because your flesh man is ruling and your flesh man won't let you do it. So you have to talk yourself into doing what you're divinely assigned to do. You have to speak in alignment with what your assignment is. So if your assignment is to clean tables, your decrees should be positioned on cleaning tables. If your assignment is to sing, your decree should be on worship and on singing. On If your assignment is to preach the word, your decrees should be in the alignment of receiving wisdom on what to preach. If you're a child, your decree should be on how to be a child. I will honor my mother and father. I will submit myself. If you're a parent, if you're a wife, your decree should be in the wifely realm. I will submit myself. Whatever I'm commanded to do, I'll do it. If you're, if you're in the realm of husband, whatever God tells me to operate in for love's sake, I'll do it. Let me see that. <laughs> All right. So wherever you're assigned is where your decrees should be positioned. Prophesying was supposed to be for your day. God prophesied Genesis. It was a declaration. He said, let there be, let there be light. He was prophesying what he wanted that day to produce. God in his wisdom created a lesser light for a reason because he knew everybody wasn't going to be hungry for him. God created the night as the lesser light because he knew everybody wasn't going to give him 100% of them. God created a realm on purpose for people that would be lackadaisical. He created the day for people that was going to go 100%. He created the night for those that was going to go other percent. <laughs> we, we got a name, but I'm not going to call them name. So the father in his wisdom knew there was going to be a degree of people that didn't give 100% of themselves. That's why he called it the lesser light because these people are in the light but they're still lesser than so they're average. If you choose to be of the lesser light <laughs> here, my, here my baby. If you choose to be of the lesser life, you'll have to spend your whole life being secondhand. God won't give nothing directly to you. He'll just give you crumbs. Saints, I pray that you don't choose to be the Lazarus generation. Oh, you got enough. <laughs> you got enough. Look, get those. Eat them. Zendaya was real good, so I had a $50 bill. She was begging me for it. I gave it to her in her hand. She said, yeah, 
She said, yay. Even children know what money is. Even children know the reward for obedience. If you choose to be of the lesser light, you'll greatly regret it. Because lesser light means that you are not operating at the full covenant of the word. So there'll be certain things that you won't have. There's certain blessings that you won't enjoy. There's certain anointings that you're never moving. Saints, I think the greatest torment will be for people. I, I think the greatest regret will be if you didn't give God 100% of you in a day. So many people are spending their time asking God what to do, what to do, what to do. I think the greatest cheating that you'll cheat yourself out of is living a life of just complete investment of you. Because if you do that, that means that you were in the lesser light. You knew the word, but God couldn't get what he wanted out of you. Since I look back at my life and I realize that I had a moment in time where I, where I, I meditated and I saw Either I'm going to live the fullness of the word, I'm going to live the halfness of the word, or I'm going to live, live the nothingness of the word. And I chose the fullness. I encourage all of you. Because sometimes we're more perfect with the world system than with God's system. Wow. We pay our taxes. We make sure that we don't go to jail. We make sure that we don't let our tickets get unpaid. But there's debts that we owe to God of our focus. There's debts you owe to God of your servanthood. And saints, what I've realized in my life that a lot of people are leaving their debts unpaid. We're quick to pay man what we what man say we owe them. But when it comes to the Lord, we, we leave him unpaid. We even look at that phrase, pay attention. It's a payment. You think about that statement, people of God, it's a it's a statement. It, it, it says pay attention. So even I'm making a transaction with my attentiveness my attentiveness is divine currency my god i need to i need to buy this take my day i got to uh, uh, sell and that little chopper get off of me Everything is a transaction that we make to God. Let me just say this. Don't be someone that's excellent to pay your debts to man, to Caesar. The Bible said, render unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar, but render unto God what belongs to God. I have found in my, my experience in this life that people are more, they're more vigilant to Caesar but not their debts to God. They're leaving God unpaid. Every day of your life, God deserves a payment. He deserves a paycheck from you. Pay God, pay him, pay him, pay him, pay him. Don't let him go undone. He's breathing life into you. You gotta pay God. And see, this is deeper than just money. This is your whole life has to become a currency. Your whole life has to become Revenue for the Father. The, one of the most beautiful things that you can become is the streets of gold because that's what Jesus walks on. Once you become a ground for Christ, 
Once you become a ground for Christ, you become a, a ground, you become a holy ground. Once you become a foundation for the Lord to walk his will upon. It's the greatest achievement. Don't leave the Holy Spirit unattended to. You, have, you know what the Lord said to me yesterday? The Lord said this in the nighttime. He said this to me. He said, son, there's a reason why I have 24 hours. There's 24 hours. There's 12 hours that represent a day. There's 24 hours that represent a day. But there's 12 hours that is the day. And, and that's so profound to me. And I didn't find that out unless the Lord has shown me in the word that it, see, he told the disciples there's 12 hours in a day. But there's 24 hours that's in the day, but there's 12 hours that is the day. So the powerful thing about this is this. With the 12 hours you have two different spans of 12 because there's 24 elders in all and all of them exemplify worship. So with the 12 hours in a day there are different dimensions of worship that you're supposed to give to God. And then we have the 12 hours in the night. Because the 12 hours in the night represents an even different degree of worship that I give to God in that time frame. If I miss that, my life will be poor. The word of God talked about something profound in Revelation. It talked about not having poverty when you become when you come before the judgment of God, not being poor and naked. Why am I naked? Because I had 24 hours to put my clothes on. My clothes was the garments of praise. My clothes was the oil of joy. My clothes was the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, doing things God's way. These are the outfits of God. So imagine this. God was saying he was going to judge you on whether you was and, and don't make sure you that you're not naked and poor. Because your whole life is a payment, is a transaction. And don't choose to be in poverty towards what the Father is looking for from you every single day. You know, if I have 24 hours, see, I started looking at that when I was a teenager because I started linking up with the Lord very strongly and, and he made me to be a man. He made me to be a man. That's why my mind is not weak. I have the mind of a warrior. I have a mind of a soldier and I have a mind of a general. I don't care who it is. If anybody can overcome the gates of hell, that's somebody to be reckoned with. The Lord Jesus made me a man. <laughs> you hear some there back to tell some wow. <laughs> Send there back to talk some wow. <laughs> but I started looking at it 24 hours in a day. What am I going to produce this year?
What am I going to permit? How much wisdom am I going to receive? How far will I go mentally? How much of the virtue of God will I pull out, I suck out in a day? Will I inspire God to talk to me? Will I become interesting to God in 24 hours? Will I become God's fascination? Will he look at me and be impressed? And people don't ask themselves this. That's why the Bible says don't be conformed to the world. Because the world don't think about impressing God. The world don't think about how does God look at me today? Is he pleased? Is he happy? Is he grieved? Is he... Is he left undone? Is he satisfied? The world don't think about that. So it said, don't be conformed to the world. Because the world don't have that mindset. The world is in selfishness. The world is all about what they're feeling, what they're attempting to achieve according to man. I notice that every time when someone dies, they point out things about them as if like that's their ticket to heaven. I noticed that if anybody dies, they'll say this person fed these people. They was in this foundation. They was doing this. But all those works, it don't avail to nothing. Remember, the Bible said that your works will be burned in fire, the fire of God. Imagine this, people of God. The fire of God will burn up everybody's deeds. And if your deeds burn in that fire, it is proof that it did not come from God. Everybody. You imagine your deeds will be placed in the fire of God. And if God didn't tell you to do those deeds, it don't matter how good it looked, how awesome it looked. If it burns when that fire is set. That means that it was not from God. But you have time. You have time. You have time. My greatest passion is to in reveal to you how much time you have to fix it. You have time. What are you doing with your time? You have 24 hours each day. You have 24 hours each day. You have 24 hours each day. Hey, baby. Hey, drink something. Hey, ma'am. <laughs> hey, I know you're trying to talk and eat, but I'm telling you. Yeah, daddy telling you you need to drink something. I'm not going to play. I'm not going. I'm not going to let you sit here and choke. All right. You feels me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, I understand, but you're going to still drink something. <laughs> Have 24 hours in a day. What you going to do with those those moments you see you see even though I'm on this line my mind's still attentive to I see I have more than one assignment so my my heart is attentive to all the assignments I can hear God talking to me about souls and then I can hear God talking to me about daughter and I can hear God talking to me you have to learn how to be attentive to all of your assignments from God. All of your assignments. All. You, listen. Here's the powerful thing. 
you have financial assignments from God. You have financial assignments. You have soulish assignments. Some people, they focus, they say, oh, oh I, I, I'm going to focus on the holy assignment. But then they forget the righteousness assignment. Righteousness and holiness is not the same thing. Holiness is mainly a position. Righteousness is, is, is when you start operating all the different channels of that position. So the Bible said that you have a new man that's in righteousness and true holiness. Because this person is finding out all the different streams of what holiness is about. You have to pay full attention to all of your assignments from God. And, and watch this here. In a day, you have to be careful and be aware of the satanic assignments that sneak up on you. That's not from God, but they'll sneak up. Imagine Satan will sneakily try to slide his assignments to your mind. And you have to catch it when it comes and say, no, that's not my assignment. No, I'm not thinking about that. No, I'm not supposed to fix that. No, I'm not worrying about that. No, I'm not going to be stressed about that. Because he'll slide his assignments in there. You better pull out, Satan. <laughs> you're, not, you're not supposed to enter. You feel me? I, I'm not going to receive it. I'm not going to receive it. You have to discern when Satan is slipping his assignments into your mind, into your focus, into your heart, into your mentality and you have to eject it and say no that's not for me i'm not going back there and, and let me say let me say this to you people of god nobody has stopped you from utilizing 24 hours in a day to accomplish god's presence that's number one because you want the presence of god and his promise send there don't do that baby wipe your hands so what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Hold on. Let me let me fix you. I clean your hands. Yeah. We wipe your hands. Okay. Hands. Hands. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Come on. Let me fix you. Give me your hands. Give me your hands. You're good now. Yeah. I fix you. Let me finish. Open your hands. Open your hands. Loose, loose, loose me. <laughs> All right, you're good now. Thank you. Thank you. Here you go. You want some? Well, your other juice. Here, drink this. You getting some? All right. just wisdom on this broadcast is just wisdom is just wisdom for life it's just wisdom for life it's just wisdom for life so you have 24 hours each day how far do you want to go with God what anointing do you want to carry how far do you want to go with God don't live this life on earth and be a mediocre woman don't be a mediocre man Oh my gosh you're, you're born of the spirit You're born of the word you're, you're born of incorruptible seed of the word You're a supernatural being Don't choose to Camouflage yourself In the midst of people That are average Go as far as possible In the Lord If I can be honest with you Though I know that I was called to, to uh, Demonstration ministry And all that stuff And Demonstrating the power of God. I had to explore that. I had to explore that. I had to go to different degrees and walk by faith to unlock that. But it took focus. It took dedication. It took seriousness. Not casualizing the presence of the Lord. And seeing the urgency there is to every day. 
acknowledge him in all my ways so that he can direct my path. I took it serious. I took it serious. I have access to the grace in which I stand. To the ability of God in which I stand. And it constantly grows. It constantly intensifies. You go from one glory and once you get to that glory, your whole job is not to even sit there and plant yourself in that glory. Your whole job is to go to the next glory. You get to one level of faith, you master that, your whole job is to go to the next level of faith. So your whole path is to keep on going further and further and further. If you stop, you'll regret it. And there are consequences when you stop. It affects you financially. It affects you in your health. It affects you in your... See, I'm listening to God in all courts right now. I'm listening to God concerning my health. See, I'm not moving so fast in the anointing that I'm thinking, hey, the anointing going to protect my health. No, no, no. I'm making steps towards my health, working out, taking care of your body, exercising your heart. If you're someone and you sit down too long, it's not good. You'll start having cramps in your legs. You'll start having stuff because that's God's way of telling you, hey, I want you to start. I want you to start. Come on, player. I'm not moving. Thank you. <laughs> you got to direct traffic like Officer Otis. I'm over here in the cut like a squirrel trying to get up. No, get out your mouth, baby. Yeah. You can't do that. You want a piece of me? You want a piece of me? Yeah. Hey, baby. Here you go. You want a sheet? Yeah. You want to go to the full degree in all your assignments. Give God your all. Refuse to be average. And once you get one degree of God's instruction done, look for the next one. And rest in God. Take care of your body. Drink water. Get rest. Take care of your body. Take care of yourself. Sometimes... If you in the mindset of I'm going to be unselfish and I'm going to help people and do this for people. Don't do that, my baby. Don't do that. When you're in that mindset, it can take you into a degree of un not taking care of you. And then you crumble in trying to make sure everybody else is good. Take care of you. Get proper rest. Drink water. Don't eat too much. Don't overeat sugar. Don't overeat sugar. Don't overeat <laughs> buttercream crock skin. <laughs> I got it. I got it. I just had to. I just had a moment of repentance. Just had a moment. Just had a moment of repentance. Hold on, Zendaya, I'm coming. I'm coming. Just got it. It's just so hard. It's just, it's just so many times. I just want to repent. I just want to ask God to just purge me. Prophet Joshua Holmes first repentance publicly. I just want to ask just want to ask the people, forgive me for just stepping on your your Twinkies and your your brownies and your your zebra cakes, <laughs> your honey buns. You ever seen them people that be crying and you don't see no tears come out? They lying. <laughs> you ever seen them people like they be they be up there? <laughs> I need to see the tear first. All right, I'm not receiving it. Moving on. <laughs> I didn't see a tear, so I'm moving on. No, I'm, I, I don't receive it. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I, I ain't. Nah. 
Nah. Nah, I'm not receiving it. Uh Uh-uh. Moving on. Take care of your body. Don't overeat sugar. Don't overeat salt. Don't overeat... um, Don't overeat things that will cause your heart to be not in good shape. And, and, And know what you're working with. Know what you're working with concerning your health. Zende, you want to give it to me? Know what you're working with with your health. If you know that like you're someone that your 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 body can't take something, decrease it. Don't don't keep eating it and say, God got me. No, no, decrease it. Take care of yourself. If you're someone, hey, you, you, you may be getting older in years. You may sit down most of the time at your job. Well, when you get home, like do something that's going to be cardio a little bit. It can just be, it, it's not, it don't go, it's not going to hurt you. Five minutes, run in place for five minutes, three minutes. Because, what, what you want? This? When you sit down for a long time and, and you eat it, your, your weight go all type of places. <laughs> like you might, you might be trying to get, you might be trying to get, um, <laughs> never mind. I'm not going to do it. Whatever. Whatever. If you're a man or a woman, you, you got to do some type of cardio for yourself. It's just to keep yourself in the activity. Keep your blood flowing. Keep yourself in a, in a, in a, in a good place. You know, you want to you be able to have um, the health part of you exercised and, and accomplished. Because it does something with your mentality too. What you doing, baby? What you doing? You good? You have to take care of your body. As you're working out too, your your feel. No, no, no. Pick it up, Zinda. You'll feel the urgency while you're working out. (laughs) You'll feel the urgency of what it is. Is to come concerning your health because sometimes there's things that's coming and God will have you make the necessary switches now so that when it comes, you'll, you'll be protected. Now, I want I, if, one day I'll probably show you some workouts that you can do that's effective. But if you work it out your lower abdomen, there are sit ups that you go all the way up to your knees, sit ups. The sit-ups is good for your belly area. Those of you all, you women that have had children, don't worry about that. God created your body. You you had your child. Your body take different forms. You have more than one child. Your body take different forms. Don't let that stress you. This not for you to change the format of that. But it is therapeutic. You don't have to be extra skinny. You don't have to be extra muscular or anything like that. But while if you're doing sit-ups, the ones that you do all the way to your knees, ah, ah, ah. don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Hold this and let this go. This not going to grab you. Thank you. Love you back. While you're doing the extra, the, the ones to your knees, Go all the way up. <laughs> the ones that you want for your lower abdomen. Your lower abdomen, like like the part next to your <laughs> your, your 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 part um your lower abdomen. When your lower abdomen, if you're going up. 
before you get to your actual knees, like your head gets your, to your knees, you form, you form, you go over to the side. That's a way of working out the lower abdomen. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to help the church. Before you get up, your, your head get up to your knees. As you're on your way up, you do the form. Like you can catch a ball. <laughs> what that sound too. But they be catching balls when they inside of the gym. They throw a ball. And they catch it. Mm. Catch the ball. Mm. They catch the ball. They when the ball get thrown at them. Mm. Ball thrown. Mm. Catch it. Catch the ball. Do the ball. Over to the side. And while they're doing the rotation, you're working out the lower abdomen. Now, you got to understand what I really mean by this. So, that's the one that you do before your head goes up to your kneecaps. The one that works out the abdomen will require you to, if you want to be effective and just want to move quickly in the effectiveness you will want to you want this again this you will have to um, you will have to do that before you get up to your knees that's to aim at your lower abdomen like where your love handles is there's a workout for love handles as well and the workout is You'll be laying down and you do your legs like crisscross while you laying down and you keep on doing that. Like imagine you doing your legs crisscross. You do that for the love handles and that will give structure to the love handles and probably bring your love handles into like a form. Now, you take it easy on that, it'll, it'll make you sore. But the soreness is a fruit that is working. That's why in everything, soreness will reveal to you that it's working. There's a financial soreness. So when, when you feel like you're getting sore financially, that's good. That means that your seed is working. If you don't feel like you, you're getting sore financially ever, that means that you're not really sowing to the full degree. And woman, you woman, not so much, not on the vein of doing uh, push-ups, because God made you the weaker vessel, so it's not really necessary for you to run after that. But you can do push-ups if you want. But mainly, mainly, yeah, yeah, chief, go on, man, yeah, Nick, go on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, go on, go on, go. No, I'm not leaving yet, baby. I was telling him to go. <laughs> I was telling him to go. I wasn't telling you to go. I was telling. Yeah, that's all I was saying. I just was telling him. I was telling Shim over there. I was telling, I was telling, what's his name? Him. Yeah, that's what I was doing. It, it, he was at blame. It wasn't me. Right. He was supposed to go. And, and I, I, I told him, I, let him, I gave him a piece of my mind first. Yeah, I had to give him a piece of my mind. You, you know, you know. And, 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 and after all of that, then I, I let him know. I wasn't telling you to go. I was telling him to go. You see what I'm saying? Right, right. That's what it was. I'm trying to tell you. Because, cause see, they be trying to be mean because, see, they didn't have a prayer like me and you. You know what I'm saying? We prayed. <laughs> right. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I thought, ah, I'm trying to, I, that's what I was saying. See, but he didn't understand. <laughs> right, right. So that's that's what it is. 
it's good for you to eat something warm on your stomach as much as you can, if you can. Like, strive to do it. Like, say you may have a busy schedule. You li Listen, even if you get those noodles and you try to eat those noodles and it's warm, you need something warm. What's up? Yeah. What, what, baby? You want to finish the conversation? I Oh, you had too much stuff you had to say? Oh, you say it's a private, you don't want to talk to, you don't want to let the public know all your business, right? Huh? <laughs> right. Right, I understand, I understand. No, I feel the same way. You got, you got two zebras on the line that we don't know about that, that's lurking? Oh, they was, they, oh, they wasn't zebras, they was kangaroos. Oh, it was an elephant. Oh, that's what it was. It was an elephant. <laughs> Sometimes God will create a <laughs> stuff. <Yeah>. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> we'll finish the conversation, bro. I got, I got, I got, I got to say two more stops. Okay. Are you at peace with that or not? Huh? Okay. <laughs> Why she gonna call my name again? Watch this here. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. What you gotta say? What you gotta say? What you got to say? You done called me. I done answered. You said, call upon me and I'll answer you and show you great and mighty thing. I done call, you done called it and answered. Now what? Zendaya, you done finish eating and everything, huh? Yeah. Huh? You done finish eating and everything, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Now, Saints, let me say this to you. Um, it's good for you to get something warm in your stomach. It's good for you to do a little exercise, keep your heart, your blood flowing, so you don't have no cramps, so that your muscles can experience the livelihood See, every day you have to exercise all of you, all the different anointings that you have, all the different the different avenues of assignment that you carry. You got to exercise all of that. So in a day, your whole job in 24 hours is to exercise all of you from your body, your mind, your money, your covenant with God. You have to exercise all those things. And as you do it, God will bless you and you'll see results, okay? So make that your objective, 24 hours of wisdom. <laughs>